So Prof. MTH posted a video there in which he talked about four different scenarios that he wanted us to consider and he asked us about the decisions that we would make, why we would make the decisions, how did the situations compare to each other and how they compare to the situation regarding the Catholic bishops and their stance towards contraception. So very quickly I'm going to summarize. State X is has put in a law prohibiting the full covering of her face and Muslim women want an exemption. State Y prohibits the use or possession of peyote and Native Americans want an exception. State Z prohibits child labor and them handing out, selling periodicals, newspaper and that sort of stuff. And Jehovah's Witnesses want an exemption because they want to be able to send their kids out to hand out leaflets and things like that. And in state F, cruelty to animals and slaughter for any other reason than to consume the animal is prohibited and Santeria churches want an exemption. These are similar situations, but there are some important differences, I think. And let me just get to the easiest one, I think, which is, in my case, would be state Z. Because I will always bring my decision down to how does this affect individual people's liberties? And the rule that I see State Z has imposed is to protect the individual liberties of children and the people who are complaining about the rule, who are looking for an exemption, are those who wish to be given the right to force a child to do something. So the person complaining about this law is not the person whose liberty is affected by this. So, as far as I'm concerned, the Jehovah's Witnesses can go take a very long hike and they will not get an exemption from me. State Y is a little bit more difficult, I think, because this is about what the Native Americans decide to do with their own bodies. Each individual Native American is making a decision to use peyote in a ritual for their own personal consumption. And I would say I see no particular reason to disallow such a thing and I would of course never even consider the law to start with but given that it's there I'm always we have to consider these 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 scenarios in the case that the law is in place and what are we going to do now? That's how I would look at it, right? That's how I interpret Prof. MTH's request here. So I would say, yes, I would give them the exemption. However, I would not do this without demanding, in return, that they would allow themselves to be exposed, not just themselves, but also their children and their fellow Native Americans, to be exposed to information about other religions and no religions, so like atheism for example, and to be exposed to information about the dangers of substance abuse. And then, with me happy to know that they have the information at hand to make an informed decision, I will be happy to give them the exemption to be using this stuff in their rituals. And that is a similar consideration as the one that I would apply to state X, but it's even more important there because when we're talking about Muslim women for example and their face coverings we have to acknowledge that on the one hand there are Muslim women who voluntarily decide to subject themselves to such dress codes on the other hand there are also Muslim women who are forced to subject themselves to such dress code and we must balance the freedom that we might wish to grant to them on the one hand with the liberty that we want to guarantee for those of them who are not willing to subject themselves to such rulings. So we could grant an exemption, certainly, but under the condition that they will allow their women and children and anybody else within the community 
to be exposed to all the information that will allow a Muslim woman who does not wish to wear such things to get out of the situation. That means alternative religions again, where to go, the addresses of safe houses, to whom they can turn in case they are being abused, where to find protection and so on and so forth. They will be given access to that. If that is acceptable then we can accept a exemption to that rule. Of course there are always situations with somebody who is completely covered up in public must allow themselves to be identified but let's not get into the nitty-gritty there. That's another discussion. The most difficult for me is state F, to be honest, because in this case the individuals affected by an exemption are not actually human. On the other hand, while I would therefore not hold the same yardstick to that decision, and I might be completely callous and flippant about it and say of course they can have their exception what do I care on the other hand we do find excessive cruelty unnecessary suffering of animals objectionable and there has to be a line drawn somewhere as to what we will tolerate to animals so on the other on this depends very much on what this ritual slaughter actually consists of how much fear and panic is the animal subjected to before the slaughter commences how prolonged and intense is the suffering of the animal during the slaughter and so on and so forth to be perfectly honest i have no good answer to this question i do not know what decision to make in this particular case I would say it depends on the details but even then I wouldn't be sure how so that was a really difficult one so then to get back to how these relate to each other I think that's been clarified in my answers to the four different scenarios how it relates to the Catholic bishops again I think this is about Catholic bishops giving people access to something that they find themselves to be objectionable but this isn't about them this is about other people and just like the Jehovah's Witnesses in state Z in my opinion have absolutely no leg to stand on and they can take a very long hike so can the Catholic bishops in this particular scenario I think their objections are very similar to the objections of the Jehovah's Witness in State Z and equally invalid. Thank you.